Yo, right. man, how's it going? Uh, what's up, dude? Nice to finally meet you. Same. We were, um, this is our second one today, so Omar and I are all fired up. We oh, are. Okay. Sick. <laughs> nice to meet you, Omar. What's up, man? Omar's producing this podcast. Got and, it. And, um, how'd you guys, how'd you guys link up? Because Omar actually sent me, sent me your info, your Instagram saying like, Hey, why don't we get mm -hmm. this guy on? And I said, Oh, I know him. The way I came across your stuff was, uh, Nick, you had posted something about it a while ago. And then I checked oh. it. I was like, Oh, this riffified mm -hmm. shit is dope. And then he just started like, Isaac, you just started showing up on my TikTok. I was like, fuck yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you're doing stuff, which Dude. is great. My, I got, I got other friends that since they follow like Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura, they're, they're mm -hmm. liking your posts. So it's just like, Oh sick. This is, this is really cool. That's awesome. Man. <laughs> You're nailing it. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like Beavis. You're, you're, doing, a, you're doing a great job. Yeah, dude, the TikTok thing has been like blowing up. And uh like the the one I did with Eric Andre, like he I uh, like we've we talked a bit in the past when I first posted that video, um, but then I reposted it as like a real and he accepted like the collaborator request so it's like on his page now and we've like talked about it stuff together and it's just like it just kept snowballing so yeah um, that's a yeah. that's a that's a dream come true that that is one of my f most favorite moments in stand-up comedy i've ever seen oh my God. like from before from before you posting it just like from being at home watching mm -hmm. you know his like just stand up you know wherever i can um uh, I'm a big stand-up fan. I love stand-up comedy, but that Same, dude. that 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 joke, not even a joke. It's just him just telling a story. Is the that performance fucking best thing ever? It is, dude. It is. I've I've literally that's my favorite stand-up special of all time. I've watched it six times. I've shown it all my friends. Yeah. I think it is. He is just a genius, man. And dude, it, it's it's so insane. When I first posted it, um, like I, probably over a year at this point, um, I think I tagged him and I was just like, yo, dude, like, like, love you. Like, and, you know, expecting for him to never see it. Mm -hmm. And he like saw it and shared it. And he's like, dude, he's like, I'm going to talk to the network. We're going to get you to do the whole special. Like, I'm going to like have them like pay you to like riffify the whole thing. And I was like, I'm like, I'm like, the fact that you've been talking to me is crazy right now. And it like never went anywhere, of course. But I was like, I'm like, dude, like he's into it. And he's, I think he's a Berkeley guy. So it's like, he, he gets, you know, our world. I think he's like a jazz bass. Oh, yeah. 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 He, went, he played studied bass yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it was berkeley it could have been i have no idea but i but i, I know oh, he studied i know he studied jazz jazz bass so he's got the same brain you know he does man he does i'm, and, and, I'm pretty yeah. sure he uh he produced that uh thundercat turbotron video oh shit oh did he really i've i've not looked into this at all um i don't know let's check it out it's eric andre eric andre thundercat that's a sick collab. <laughs> oh, he was on. He was on the Eric Andre show. Thundercat was on the Eric Andre show. Mm. Um, it's funny. I can't. I like. I love the Eric Andre show to death, but I've I've tried to binge it, and I just get like my brain can only handle so much. <laughs> it's like it's and, uh, so much. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely one of my favorite things to put on, and I can't really watch it with anybody, especially like my wife does not get this, that humor whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so it's it's more of uh, all right. No one's home. I guess I'm gonna watch. Um, I guess I'm gonna watch uh, Eric Andre. One hundred percent. Are you into like uh, uh, Tim and Eric at all? Yeah, back in the day when that was you know reg regularly on Adult Swim and stuff. But absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my god. Same. Same. It's the same to me. It's like the same part the of the next, brain. The, the next to the next generation of of that because it's a little bit a little bit more aggressive i think he's got to be younger <laughs> than them than them as well yeah i think so yeah that was, that was a while ago and the and check it out with steve Brule, john c riley like all that shit is just oh my god yeah my, so my favorite ones are the dark ones like uh uncle muscles like when they're kind of oh yeah dude <laughs> they're just they're just uh like dancing in a dark room and have like really depressing makeup on their face like mm -hmm. like they just it's like almost not that funny it's just you're, you're like you get kind of worried or, I, like, yeah i'm on. like i hope i hope they're safe i hope they're okay yeah. that's kind of why i couldn't i couldn't totally handle like i think i watched three episodes of, of eric andre's show in a row and, I, and i'm like dude i need a break like i need i need to like be grounded back to reality because like i don't know if you've ever been to his website i don't know if it's still this way but mm -hmm. i went to his to his site like uh way back in the day and it's just like his face on a, on the body of a centipede that just like uh keeps going is the, the more you the, the more you scroll down yeah. and at the top it says like comedy just comedy does not exist and like psychedelic fine it's just like it's so insane and that's 
I love it, man. I can't get enough of that shit. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> I think I have seen that. Um, so, do you, so you work for Strandberg, right? Yeah, I run our artist relations and uh, social media. Nice. Um, it, it seems like you're just like popping off. Like, I check your. I came across the Eric Andre thing, and you know, you had I don't know nine thousand something followers, and then and then I'm kind of stalking you a little bit, also because I knew you were coming on here and I wanted to mention it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, next thing you know, you're like approaching 11,000 followers and it seems like you're cranking out these, like this short form content more mm-hmm. so now than even like a month ago it was more just like, you know, songs, original, original songs and playthroughs and stuff. And mm-hmm. so to, to me, it's, it looks like just recently you've kind of come across this, this, uh, this cool project of, of like writing heavy riffs to you know things that you like and it's and people like it too yeah. i know i like it I think yeah it's is, is Thanks, that man is that accurate is this like a new thing that you kind of started well, doing so it's funny so i i made the first riffified like probably two years ago for this um there's a there's a uh the facebook group called strandberg spark which is like our strandberg kind of community and it's this kind of like creative um creative facebook group where we uh we put out these like these prompts every two weeks and people uh make content based on these prompts it's like a fun kind of community community building thing um kind of strandberg themed and so i did one of these with um actually speaking of, of comedians it was john mulaney's uh delta airlines bit where he's talking about how delta airlines is, like framed him for murder and stuff and it's that's like one of my favorite bits and so i like play guitar along to it just i forget what the what the prompt was but um, but people loved it. And like, I think metal sucks wrote it up and got a bunch of coverage and stuff. And I was like, Oh, it's like, okay, there's like something here. And for me, it's like, I love, I love heavy, heavy, technical, proggy, weird music. And I love comedy. And I just like to keep things like positive and lighthearted, like all the time. That's kind of my jam. Mm-hmm. So it, it scratched a lot of those itches for me. And, um, so I just, I just kind of started doing it and I have probably, I think at least 30 riffified videos that I've done since then, um, from, from a while ago. And they started out um like i did one with alex jones and just kind of like all like the all these viral clips that i feel like most people know call it cartoons and stuff mm-hmm. and um they started out as these like kind of like longer form videos and when, when i said longer form i guess they're like a minute to a minute and a half because that's as long as my brain can can handle that music but mm-hmm. um and i was i was like kind of killing myself over it because it, they took so long to like write record edit film like all this stuff and um so I, st- I started started kind of like refining them to be shorter and kind of more easily digestible and just honestly easier to produce um, over the past like year or so. And then when reels on Instagram kind of became a, became a thing, um, I was I was like, oh, I should like kind of repost a lot of this older stuff on on social media and just kind of get it back out there because because like no you know no one really knew about it and um, mm-hmm. I forget like why not. So I um, reposted a couple of the older ones which I think are on my page now more recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did one the one that kind of kickstarted this whole thing recently was this this gibbon like screaming and i just like chugged on my eight string just the 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 most like kind of like layman's gent just like mm-hmm. no real creative effort just like i'm just like oh just like i'll match the rhythm it'll be easy it'll be fun whatever big big uh meme meme value and um and it hit like it's like a like 1.7 million views and it was like the first like proper viral thing and i was like okay like people love animals people love gent i can like work with that and um we can talk about this like we can go in depth with this but like i it that does nothing for me as an artist like creatively i can just chug to like a monkey screaming all day and like i i you know it's funny it doesn't really like scratch any mm-hmm. again scratch that that part of my brain but um but people seem to like it and um it's, and it it's does, just yeah. Fun. It, yeah it does it does something i mean it brings people to your music you know yeah like i think a, a lot of us are trying to find new ways to to bring people to our music because mm-hmm. um so how do you know me? How do you know? Because you used to, you, dude. So I I uh well, for, first heard about you from Everforth, right? Like way back in the day, I was like super into your guys to that album, yeah. and um I basically followed your music ever since then, like with your solo stuff and uh, No Band and Stimpy Lockjaw and just like, and uh Everforth was the first like kind of prog metal band that I heard really exploring like jazz harmony like you guys did, mm-hmm. and I just saw you play and I was like, dude, like what is this guy? And then the Seymour Duncan solo. Which I think is the greatest solo of all time, dude. I learned, I tried to learn it. Uh, it's the hardest piece of music I've ever played. You're like, I don't want to gush, but like, you're literally like top three favorite oh. guitarists of mine. Like, you've influenced my playing beyond what you know, dude. Like, oh, you man, just I appreciate like, that. It's you're um, I I go to your page every day, and I'm like, dude, I like you. 
see, dude, and like I, you know, I run like artist relations, so I see a million guitarists every day just being like, "Oh, endorse my band, send me free guitars, like check out my band," yeah. and it's so much of the same stuff. And a lot of it's great, but um, you have such your 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 you know um, jazz theory knowledge and. I, I always like feel like I describe your playing as very like very angular to people, and I'm, I'm like I'm like he just like has the notes. He just has all the notes all the time. Knows how to navigate anything, and um, so dude, really, I'm, just, I'm just a massive fan, dude. Yeah. Oh man, I really appreciate it. Um, um, well, thanks, dude. The yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but, no, I just, but, <laughs> but it's it's. it's Let's see. What do I? How do I? How do I get out of that? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's how I. That's how I know about you. So I just. I just. Yeah. I just love your shit, man. I think you're. You're a monster. Oh, thanks. Um, so right. So back when Ever Fourth was like the first real thing I ever released. I was like twenty one years old or something. Yeah. I, I mean, Ever Fourth had demos before that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Sans Chris Beretto, pre Chris Beretto. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, no, it, it didn't really go anywhere. It didn't really pick up. And then, and then kind of prog metal hit this like point where periphery and ever forthright and then everything kind of just came out in like year, uh, what was that like 2009, 10, 11, right? Yeah. In the, that, in the range. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, so we would, I would put out videos of me playing guitar in my in like my bedroom on YouTube and then overnight get like 10,000 views. And, mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it was because, uh, you know, what I was playing was like super miraculous, but, uh, or like we'd put something on SoundCloud and, you know, thousands of views or anything we posted mm -hmm. anywhere was just like, poof, it's hit. And, and, uh, you know, some personal life things happened where I couldn't really write or record music for a period of time. And, mm -hmm. um, in the past few years, I've been able to get back into it. And I just feel like the world has changed so much, you know, putting out stuff is, is, is so, it's so challenging now to get people to hear, to hear your music. So, you know, like this podcast is an effort to just kind of explore other ways to talk to people and build relationships and mm -hmm. um, access other people's audiences to kind of say, you know, Hey, I'm writing music over here. Um, mm -hmm. And so one of those things also seems to be that didn't exist a decade ago is short form content. And this is my first mm -hmm. time seeing like short form content really work and do something. Yeah. Um, Dude, and it's like, it's part of the brand, you know, you kind of have to have that, that, um, that, I don't know, your finger in the marketing pie, so to speak. And I think it's like, I think as artists, especially as musicians, like we always have to be a, a billboard for ourselves. But now it's like that times infinity because everyone's doing it and everyone has the tools to make sick content. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that kind of pressure of like you have to be putting out stuff. And I kind of flip flop on it because I'm I'm really deep into the social media stuff. I'm I'm always looking at Instagram guitarists and TikTok stuff and there's apps that are that are coming and going. Um, but it's like there's this pressure as an artist to also make content, which has pros and cons. But I think if you can do it in a way that's sincere and like taps into a thing that you're already sort of known for and, and is like a genuine interest of yours. Um, I think that's kind of the most successful way to do it, but, but you're right. Like it didn't really exist, you know, a decade ago. And I think, I think that's yeah. almost my theory is that the, it, part of the reason those videos took off back in the days because the, the infrastructure wasn't so like saturated with everyone making these videos. So the videos that were made like stood out a lot and yeah. got a lot more traction. And, um, and then obviously like prog metal was just, people were doing new stuff. Yeah, the there's a, there's so much of it now as well. Um, mm -hmm. The yeah, one of the first videos we did was me playing along to dispose of your optimism in in Billy's the other guitar player's bedroom, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know if that video is still on. I mean, it would be cool if it was still on YouTube, just as like a just a stamp in time. Like, yeah, at a point, mm -hmm. like this is how playthroughs looks. You just kind of rolled your webcam and. <laughs> Dude, you know, so diy <laughs> so diy and like yeah like the the pristine playthrough wasn't quite a thing yet i think it was just starting to happen mm -hmm. um but yeah so yeah and for me it's challenging too the short form content stuff because um well for several reasons one i'm, I'm just a guitar player like i like to write mm -hmm. music and i like to think about music and study music and you know practice like the playing practice the guitar like it doesn't get much more brass tacks 
you know, than that mm -hmm. to, to also, um, to now focus on learning like Adobe Premiere to edit video. And... Dude, exactly. Like when, did you ever think like, like, like when you first picked up a guitar for the first time, you're like, okay, I'm going to have to learn my, my keystrokes for Premiere one day. Like, <laughs> it, it, no, I didn't, I didn't think that. And for a while I was trying to do something, but it's, to me, it's not worth it. Like, um, I'm not going to be, I'm not able to, to make this, the art that I want to make if I also have to do that. Yes. Um, maybe, maybe if, if I like had a very different life, but I have, um, I've got my second son on the way at this point. Oh man. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a busy dad. Um, I mm -hmm. do other stuff just to make money because I'm not making, you know, I'm not paying my mortgage from selling, you know, um, like my atonal you know guitar riffs and and stuff mm -hmm. i mean i love doing it but it's not paying it's not really paying the bills mm -hmm. um so you know with what little time i have i just want to be so passionate about what i'm about what i'm doing so i've pretty mm -hmm. much said no i'm not doing it i'm not learning premiere adobe premiere i'm not doing it so this actually works for me this the podcast because it um allows me to be who i am i can talk about music to people that i that i like mm -hmm. um and, uh, you know, thankfully I have, uh, my buddy here helping me out kind of producing it, you know, um, and, uh, yeah, so this isn't really short form content, but I, I, I don't know. It's, it's something it's, it can it's some, be though. It's some kind of content. Yeah. I guess if like there was some silly, ridiculous clip that we could pull out of here. Could... Yeah. I mean, I think that's a big, that's a big part of it is sort of like, you know, you get to a point where, where your time is super valuable and, um, you just, you don't want to be doing anything else than the thing you want to do. And, um, I don't know if it's like this quick little side tangent, but do you know, uh, gear gods YouTube channel? Like, uh, uh, yeah, I know, I know of it. I don't know too much about what they're posting anymore, but sure. So, so Trey from gear gods, uh, we've been roommates for like five years. And so I like worked with him for a long time and I was doing like all his video stuff and social media. Mm -hmm. Um, and we always had this uh, relationship where he would shoot the videos. Um, I would edit them, but then he, he like, he just kind of what we're talking about now, he just wanted to focus on making videos and just doing the thing that he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then he would offload all the other stuff to your boy and he would pay me in money. And I would like, you know, yeah. I would, uh, do all, this, all the stuff he didn't want to do. And I think, and I think that's kind of the move. If you can like outsource, I mean, obviously you got Omar and you have like, you know, people helping out with the stuff. I think, um, I think that's the move, you know, cause then to find, you can some, just focus. To, to find some kind of symbiosis with, with exactly. somebody else. Yeah. Yep. And if you're, you know, if you're a dad, if you, if you have, if you have limited time, but like some money, you know, from like a day job or whatever, like you know, putting that into to some sort of content production engine where you don't even have to touch it. It's just people taking the clips, you know, someone else can sit through this podcast, take some juicy clips, put text over it, put music, and then upload that. And you're, you're just like, cool, looks good. And then, so like, therefore you're not spending any time on it. And, um, but you still get the kind of the extra juice from it, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see a lot of people doing that. And, um, it's funny because I've always been the person doing that for other people, but now I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, I don't want to, I just want to play guitar, man. I just want to write riffs. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's funny that you said, uh, like you have, uh, like Strandberg, Strandberg applications and it's like, oh brother, another one of these, another mm -hmm. one of these things. Um, I, I just feel like I've, uh, like the, in this, you know, wacky world of music, the one thing I do right is play the, the guitar. And everything mm -hmm. else, everything else is <laughs> like I, I'm terrible at. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't produce video. I, I barely produce like my. I only just started started engineering my own stuff from home with uh, the Noah Band project. Mm -hmm. um, that the first EP from last year, I engineered from home and then sent it off to um, Adam Bentley from um, Buck from. Uh, Shit, Adam Bentley. Oh, oh Art Checkup. Art Checkup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he mixed it. And then uh, this time around, I just got out of the studio for the second round of the Noah Band, uh, some more songs. But this time I wanted to actually explore going to a studio and having a different, like someone else engineer mm -hmm. and stuff. Just, you know, use real amps. I can't I can't use real amps here. Um, so, so I did that time around. Um, uh, shit, what was my point? Nope, it's gone. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we'll edit this out. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, just edit this part out on my. Um, is this edited, by the way, this podcast? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sick. We, okay. Yeah. Right. As an editor, I'm always, I'm like, I'm like, I wish I could just edit real life. It'd be awesome. Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, but I, uh, I, I don't, uh, like, I don't really produce, I don't really do too much engineering at home. I don't really, um, I'm not uh, making content so much. Um, man, I really wish I could find a way to, it'll probably come back to me, but yeah. Um, well, it's, it's interesting. Cause I think, I think, so like, I'm, I'm definitely with you. Like, I think there's this sort of like dichotomy of like the artist and then like the business marketing brain. And I think the successful artists are the people that are able to do both to some extent. Got it. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's if that, yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, that, but... I, I got it. Yeah, I, the, so the, the so marketing is the other is also something that I've. It's not that I'm bad at it. I actually have a master's degree in marketing. Actually, that's my master's degree on the wall, right? Oh, nice. <laughs> right <there. laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's just a time thing. Like I don't have mm -hmm. the time to to really to really think about it. Um, um, I, I mean, yeah. I suppose I could cut up my time differently, but I really, really just want to play the guitar. That's all. Yeah, that's all I want to do. So, Dude. so in terms of marketing, I've, um, I don't think I've ever, maybe a handful of times, I've sent kind of things to companies saying like, "Hey, this is who I am. Would like to get to know, you know, get, like to love to build a relationship. Maybe we can talk about." you know, X, Y, and Z, and we can scratch each other's back, but nothing has really ever panned out. Even like uh, Ernie Ball Strings, I've, I've tried reaching out to a few times, um, just like, you know, throw me a 10% discount on some strings. I'm always, I'm always buying your damn mm -hmm. guitar strings. Throw me a damn yeah, discount. Ah. <laughs> That's super yeah. doable. Yeah. yeah, I feel you, man. It's, it's sort of, um, I think time management's a big part of it. I, I know with, with, with Trey, uh, he, um, cause we've been talking a lot about like, um, you know, vertical short form content like TikTok and stuff. And he's been like batch, batch shooting a lot of it. So like for an afternoon on a Friday, he'll shoot, you know, four or five little videos and then send those to his editor to like deal with and kind of put up. So it's like the minimal amount of time he, that he's spending on it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, but yeah, I feel you, man. Like if, if all you want to do is play guitar and like, just do one thing, like, I think it's better to, to do that than uh, try to force yourself to do something else that you feel like you just, you if you're, do, if you're like, if you're doing something you don't want to be doing, your and your brain's kind of naturally going to be like, oh, but I could be playing guitar, I could be writing music. Like, yeah. and I think it can kind of like, I'm I'm of this sort of opinion that I think, um, everything is so polished these days on social media. Every artist is putting out like just the cream of the crop version of themselves, and I think there's sort of this craving in like the kind of zeitgeist of like people want authenticity, and I I know I know I crave that. Like, I'd rather see a dude just playing with his like you know um, camera audio on. Um, mm -hmm. or phone audio playing guitar playing some like amazing guitar parts i'd rather rather see that than the most overly produced you know play through a music video and um i'm sure there's people that disagree with me but i i feel like it's just like i don't know it's so hard to like kind of set yourself apart these days with that stuff like yeah that's interesting you say that because like i've taken the couple extra minutes to um if i'm playing something i like and i think oh you know the instagram might, world might like this too um mm -hmm. i've done both things where i've you know, propped up my phone and just kind of played it and posted it or come over to this spot, plug in to my, to my, uh, to my box here, run it through logic, you know, pull up Helix native or something and get mm -hmm. a nice jazz tone. Uh, if I take the extra time to do it that way and then, you know, take that audio and, and actually mesh it with, uh, the, the video that I shot, even just like on like mm -hmm. iMovie or something, cause all I'm doing is matching video and, Video yeah and, and oh, it's not a big project uh those those go over way better than mm -hmm. than just than coming through through i mean i guess at the end of the day it's still me playing the guitar so i guess there's that it's not like a to it's not a tony totally uh phony playthrough video it's actually right i'm actually playing the guitar so i guess it's still pretty authentic but it, i but yeah but it, it does uh go over better in terms of views and shares and all that kind of stuff um mm -hmm. if i take the extra time to actually come over here and, and record legit audio Right, right, and yeah. it, and it can be. Um, I found with with the Riffified stuff, it can be really uh, like motivating to see people's feedback on stuff. Like, I actually I went through a pretty big burnout period for probably like three or four months um, towards the beginning of this year, where I just I wasn't making any Riffified stuff because I just had a million other things going on. And I'm like, yeah, like they do okay, but like I don't know. I feel like it just it wasn't getting the sort of the traction that I was hoping for. Um, but then a couple of them like did really well, and I was like. I felt really good about the views and stuff. And I, I, I didn't like that. I liked that feeling. Like I, I didn't like that external val validation felt so good, Yeah. but it, um, I, you know, I, I, but I couldn't, I couldn't lie about it. Like I, I'm like, man, like when that one hit a million views, 
I was like, dude, that's like, actually, that makes me want to make more stuff. And it's cool to like, see it having a positive impact on people. And like, for my stuff, it's, it's mostly like an entertainment thing. So there's like a good handful of musicians who are like, dude, like, that's awesome. I love like the weird shit you're doing, but most of it's just like, oh, dude, it's so funny. Like, LOL. And, um, and they're both encouraging. And I, I didn't realize like how motivating it would be to put out stuff and get that feedback. And so for me, it was like almost the opposite where the, the, when I started putting out stuff more consistently, I got more consistent feedback and that has just kind of pushed me to like want to do it more. Um, which is, that was never the setup that I thought would work for me. I, 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 cause I'm, I've like, I just want to make stuff really, if, if I know, I know part of me is like, I, I know that if I'm not stoked on something, I won't do it for anyone else. Like, it doesn't matter how cool of a gig it is or who's going to see it. Like if I'm not happy about it, like I just won't, I can't find it within me to like do it. Um, so there's almost a, a, a bit of like kind of just getting the ball rolling. And if you're able to have sort of a, you know, you post once a week, post two, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like have some sort of basic kind of consistent schedule in place. Um, that I've, for me, at least I found that to be very, um, yeah, very motivating because it's almost like an accountability thing, you know? Consistency. Yeah. And and I, and honestly, I think consistency is probably the, the biggest thing to focus on. Like, even if it's, you're not doing these big overly produced videos and stuff, like if you just post at a consistent rate, um, you know, just, just the uh, videos of you playing guitar, maybe sync up some audio that you recorded. Maybe it's just the phone audio, but as long as it's consistent and you kind of build this like expectation with your fan base, I think that's way better than, than trying to get all the fancy lighting and stuff. And then, cause you're, cause then you like sit down and you're like, you're not even thinking about guitar. You're thinking about a million other things that are just kind of irrelevant, you know? Um, yeah. And I mean, yeah, that's kind of my opinion. Um, in terms yeah. of just like you yeah. know, social um, stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on consistency. I don't think um, I'll ever be the guy that is uh, doing like the the best lighting and best video. I mean, I'd like to get this mm -hmm. as we do this podcast more and more. I'd love to, you know, maybe ch change how it looks, get a better microphone, um, mm -hmm. you know, possibly throw a cooler backdrop in or something like that. Um, but I, I but I don't see myself being like the like the super clean cut play through guitar yeah I, it's also not it's not what i do it doesn't feel it doesn't feel right if anything um what feels right for me is to just double down on the whole um you know what you see is what you get kind of thing like yeah man like next time i'm in the studio um doing you know uh some video of tracking the guitars or if what i'd love to do eventually with the noah band is is a live recording session so everyone playing at the same time sick um i couldn't do that this time around because of like the ability to rehearse it was really challenging with like you know covid was like off the walls again and mm -hmm. uh the bassist was having a child and um uh you know everyone was super busy to let so to, so to put together you know 10 rehearsals and get a, a four-piece band to the point where we can comfortably go into a studio hit record and just play with one another and have it be perfect yeah that's a lot that's, that's, that's a lot of work yeah mm -hmm. so uh i would I, i'd love to do that eventually maybe next time and um you know that's the kind of thing i would love to have a camera rolling for like mm -hmm. that's that's something that you don't really see very much of like oh shit this is just four guys playing like, yeah and and that's that's as that's as authentic as it gets you know i mean you're all just like there's no there's no funny business there's no, there's no editing there's no cuts like it's just like you and and yeah. your and your skill and i think that's yeah that's huge man that's the shit that i love that that's like what gets me going yeah because it's like any, i don't know anyone can mime along to stuff i think it's uh it shows like just how true true of musicians um you guys are and like how uh yeah, I don't know. It's it's just like authentic. It's just real. It's just well, like yeah. Well, I got to do it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, at the end of this month, I am I am also doing a, a video for the for the Noah Band stuff that I just recorded, which is going to require that I fake along with some um, oh, okay. stuff. So, like you know, it is what it is. Like it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> oh. I love that. Yeah. Any, uh, I feel like so. I, I just listened to the one, you, uh, the episode, episode. I think last episode with uh, with Jacob. Mm -hmm. I think, and I think you're talking about new ever fourth rate stuff. I'm I'm curious. Yeah. Like, is anything? How's yeah. that coming along? That's happening. I mean, it's being mixed. Like, I just got we like the epic. The you know the epic on the album is um, is this song called Tech and Flux that is is like is probably like a teenager. It's probably like 13 years old. That song. 
And it start it was it was actually like one of the first ever fourth right songs I ever wrote. And it was like the first version of it was maybe three and a half minutes long. Um, and then uh, we had met Chris and Chris started picking um, songs to do vocals to. And somehow this one, this one didn't make the cut. Um, you know, he, he picked, he picked one song and another song. Next, next thing you know, we had 60 minutes of like, I think 72 minutes. How long is that first album? Very long. 72 minutes. Yeah. 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 And, um, and, you know, we had some songs left over and this, this song was like one of the ones that was left over. And, and then we just kept on working on it. We're like, like, you know, the song has, we forgot about a bunch of the others, but we was mm-hmm. like, this song is, has something here. We worked on it. We worked on it. We, we had writing sessions with the keyboard player at the, t- at the time. Um, mm-hmm. And then this song eventually grew to being like this 13 minute, just, you know, prog metal epic my and, man and, and <laughs> so that's that uh that's that's the mix we got back today so i was um i was like downstairs making a coffee and then i got a text from billy the other guitar player who's been talking mm-hmm. to george lever the uh, guy mixing it um mm-hmm. and uh he's like here's here's the first mix of tag and flax and it was like whoa we're here we're at this moment where like we you sound like a band <laughs> it sounds yeah. real yeah and it's like it's no longer it, this it's it's been like ye- years like i'm pretty sure 13 years since since that song was first recorded on like you know cubase 4 or or something i don't i don't, <laughs> I don't know and um that's amazing now dude. i'm getting now i'm getting a text saying here's like your your first pass at a like a finished mix of this song that you've been working on for like 13 mm-hmm. years so that 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 much is crazy and um to have uh jacob on it to have real drums on it um mm-hmm. There's like a two minute jazz guitar solo on it. Um, it's got it's got like the works. It's really like our our it's like our baby. It's crazy. It's dude, that what a feeling, man. Congratulations, dude. That I cannot thanks. wait to hear that shit, dude. Thanks. Oh yeah, my god. So so yeah, but yeah, to your question, it is it, it's all coming. And then we've gotten mixes of like four or five other songs the past past couple of weeks. Um yeah, it's happening. We we're we're trying to parallel path working getting some art together um yeah and, and so that i guess that brings me on to the next thing like releasing music these days is now different from how it used to be you know we woke up yes. one day we woke up one day in like early december and said hey we should put out the album this month should we just release it in a week okay sure and then we put out the album like december something um kind of mm-hmm. just you know just like, all right cool we got it like i guess we, this is this is what you do right you just kind of release music and you put it out in the world and they i think it hit number one on Bandcamp for a little while and which is very which is apparently really hard to do now um yeah i mean there's a whole there's a whole like process to it right like a whole album cycle it like it takes so long yeah and i don't think anyone would dream of putting out just 72 minutes of music in like like just one shot (laughs) just now you know Mm -hmm. um now people are like um I only recently learned about waterfall release strategies. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, know, you you put out one song and then three weeks later, put out another song, a couple weeks later, put out the next song. And, mm-hmm. um, and the yeah, way the singles, yeah, the, the singles and then the singles all are technically the same ISRC. They're the, they're the exact same track that they're connected to the final album when the final album is, is released. So, I think we'll probably mm. try to do that, but it's going to be our first time. Just kind of like a bunch of old men, just like, okay, what are these kids doing? Waterfall <laughs> release strategy, and- dude. That that's so funny. Like, we're so my band's kind of in a similar position. Like, we obviously we're like a lot, a lot younger than you guys, but um, we're in the process of putting out our second album. Um, hopefully at the end of this year, and working with the label and stuff. And I can't I can't say too much, but we're in that same kind of like boat of uh, of like this next you know few month period is going to be uh, our our whole kind of marketing campaign, and it's. It's so weird to think about because our first album we just like put out <laughs> one day. We're like, here's an hour of prog metal, uh, and like we do um, our whole sort of approach um, is all of our songs just to, like flow into each other. It's like one long continuous piece of music, kind of like a, like Colors by BT Bam. Mm-hmm. We're like just long prog songs, and um, so this album is a continuation of of our first album, and uh, so there's like so much that has to go into it. Like, none of the songs are like real really singleable. We put out one single since then, and it's um it was, it was like, one of the more kind of easily digestible tunes but mm-hmm. they're all so long they're all so 
just so weird. There's like, oh uh, yeah, so that makes it that makes it challenging if you've kind of make, turned it into a concept album because it kind of yeah the way it stitches into the next the next thing. So I'm I'm doing that with the video that I'm recording uh, that I'm mm. that I'm doing in a couple of weeks where at, the songs are separate. So the songs are very singleable. I could put out singles okay. and it'll be a piece of cake. Um, but our plan for the video is to have to have all the video connect. So like. Um, Ooh. Yeah, so it isn't just a playthrough. It's a kind of a playthrough music video combination. And so I'll mm-hmm. release the songs in track order. And as, I re- mm-hmm. as if, you know, if I release it on YouTube, here's the first video. The second video will come out a couple weeks later, and it's actually a continuation of the first video. And then the third video dude. is a continuation. But, I love that shit, dude. Thanks. I didn't come <laughs> up with it. The uh, cinema guy came up with it. So. <laughs> but I'm paying. But that, that's a nice... Uh, yeah, <laughs> That's a good way to keep... Uh, to just kind of rope people in. It's like you're... I think a lot of like conceptual stuff because um, I don't know if you know, if you know like um, the Deer Hunter, another great kind of yeah 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 the great mis- yeah tons of like conceptual stuff. And so I always think with with um, yeah songs and albums that have like an underlying story. I think you're I almost think of it like you're watching a, a TV show, like watching a series, and you sort of like get people in uh, at the you know the the pilot, and um, that's when you sort of kind of get people along for the ride. So mm-hmm. I love that this video concept of like people are almost like watching episodes of of the songs and oh, you sort yeah. of uh you know pull them in that way that's awesome. yeah yeah it's a good way to think of it uh y- yeah so yeah being a musician nowadays is is so much more than just being a, a bunch of guys that write songs or being a solo artist that that writes songs like you really have so many mm-hmm. means of being creative short form content long form content videos mm-hmm. podcasts like and educational things that's something i haven't really tapped into yet but what could probably really work mm-hmm. for me is um you know top my you know a three chord chord progression that i'm obsessed with at the moment or uh mm-hmm. so a new approach to the you know the whatever scale that um you could try using in your solos you know that's probably something that c- could work for me because i've always been like the, the theory guy um, yeah dude even uh, um uh playing anything from anywhere right i think i oh yeah 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 i awesome. i have i have that on my computer somewhere i i like went through it like ages ago and it was so sick and dude, there's, oh, thanks. there's like i feel like everyone needs to know, to know about that especially if you're like into the kind of jazz world and if you have a if you have a knack for like improvisation like there's so you could take any any page out of that and, and turn that into it. some little thing yeah man yeah um, i appreciate that thanks um and it's, yeah, it's highly shareable too i think people like get a little lesson of something and they're like they're like oh my, my buddy could could use this and then they there's a lot of kind of like reshare value and then in, mm-hmm. in tandem with that like you're kind of building your brand you're building what you're known for um yeah, yeah. tons of value in that yeah 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 so even um i was listening to some some podcast the other day where they had like a five minute friday like every monday was their long mm-hmm. form podcast then fridays they released a five minute mini thing that was just like, mm-hmm. I think it was like a health podcast. Like, a, you know, hey, a quick tidbit for making a healthy breakfast. Try adding oatmeal to your, you know, smoothies and you'll have oatmeal in your smoothies. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was, so that's something I've just kind of been thinking of, of in my head. Um, you know, Five Minute Fridays could be like music education and, you know, Mondays could be like the long form podcast like we're doing. Totally. Doing right now. So, yeah, but my point being is, is um this kind of thinking uh is uh it's it's like firing off a new part of my brain i haven't had to to use before and it's just kind of exploring mm-hmm. different different options now and also you know ever Forthright has done really well like in the cult world mm-hmm. like i think it came out at the right time and um you know it did a really the music kind of spoke for itself and we didn't really have much we didn't market that one tiny bit, you know, we mm-hmm. didn't, I, I think we also went on like three kind of smallish tours. I think in total mm-hmm. ever fourth it may have played like less than 50 shows, you know? Dang. Yeah. We didn't really... was, was that on a label too? No, no label. I mean, there was uh, this one label. I don't even want to say its name um, mm-hmm. that didn't really do anything. It was just kind of, it was just kind of uh I think at the time, you know, a bunch of early 20 year olds were like, oh, this guy said he's got a label. Okay. Let's, you know, let's, yeah. say, let's say we're on a label. And, you know, nowadays I think uh-huh. people, are, people are a little bit smarter about that. So, but it didn't, mm-hmm. that didn't go anywhere. That didn't do a damn thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, so yeah, ever fourth, right. Even in the days of ever fourth, we weren't, we weren't thinking of like a rollout plan or a marketing plan, or it was just, just, you know, let's just put up the music, play some shows if they come, come our way and, and that's it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, simpler times, simpler times. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, a bunch of my friends have kept the music thing going since then mm -hmm. for, you know, 10 plus years now who are probably, who are masters of this. Um, and I frankly kind of feel like I'm wasting their time asking them for, for advice, but, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that is what it is, right? Yeah. And, and I think, um, one thought that's been very helpful to motivate me to, to kind of do the more promotional stuff and, and market like my brand and like my band is to like, uh, it's, it's. You're, you're like you're doing yourself a favor when you make this kind of extra content because it can feel like like a time suck of like oh like i'd rather be doing i'd rather just like put out my music now and just like let it kind of live there but i think um I, actually we had this conversation with uh with this label we're, we're, we're working with because we you know our this album we've been working on we started writing it before our first album was even out and it's like at least i think it's like six years old at this point like the, the actual material it feels like so old to us like we're, we're like who even wrote this it's like it's our newest stuff and we're, we feel so removed from it yeah. um and it's like yeah, long, proggy, just weird, crazy. Like it's it's got everything in it, and uh, and we're we're we are like because there's been so much build up to it, um, because it's been in the works for so long. We're we are just Jones into release it in the, into the world, and uh, we're talking to the label and some of the guys there. They're, they're like, you know what? Like we know you want to just put it out, but like if you send it out to just your your small Instagram following and your small like um, social media pages, like no one's really going to see it. Yeah. And it's true. And it's like, so you, you're actually doing yourself a, a big favor by doing the, doing the kind of, yeah, waterfall strategy, like marketing it, taking your time with it and really like building up some momentum to actually have people who are on the receiving end of listening to it when it finally does come out, you know? And it sucks yeah. as an artist who's like held on to this thing for, I can't I mean, I can't imagine a 13 year old song like that is like, Oh my God, just ready. <laughs> yeah. And then the worst part is I, it was actually me that suggested today in our group chat when we got it, like, look guys, I know this is probably the last thing any of you want to hear. Should we do a music video for this? Which would mm -hmm. mean like, like adding at least six months on to the release of this yeah. song. Like finding an, a creative director to put together a plan for a 13 minute song to shoot it, to raise the mm -hmm. money for it, to edit it. Um, at that point, you're like up to your neck in the responsibility to market it correctly. So now you really got to yeah. think of a marketing plan. 100%. Um, and I think everyone was just kind of like, no, fuck that. Like, <laughs> we've waited. <laughs> like, how can we make this harder on us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, at it's at a certain point. Um, there's only so much you can do, right? There's only so much you can do. Like, is the is is a video for this song really going to be worth the additional, you know, amount of time it takes for it, you know, to uh, to come out? And I, mm -hmm. honestly, I think even you know, you can't really have a 13 minute band playthrough video. Like you really, we would have to get actors in there mm -hmm. and create some kind of storyline to keep a 13 minute video engaging. So totally. it, it would get, it would just get wildly expensive. And I think that in itself would mm -hmm. just kind of crush it in its tracks. Um, but you know, but the, the, the Noah band stuff that is, that is happening. I, I will have video for that. And I, mm -hmm. and, um, the day that I spoke, got off the phone for the first time with, um, the guy shooting the video, um, I was like, oh man, I just bought myself like another two months of having to wait to put this out. But 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 I feel really good about it in this case. Um, mm, I think um, it's gonna be a worthwhile. Yeah, kind of this thing. this I feel I feel much I feel more comfortable with. It's I don't have the pressure of having, um, uh, it's not like a second ever forthright that people have been waiting a decade plus for. It's right. um, it's kind of my own thing. So if it, whatever happens, I'm the only one feeling the repercussions. Whereas ever fourth, it's a bit mm -hmm. of a group group project, for sure. So, do you uh, feel like those yeah. the, the two projects sort of like um, I don't know, like balance themselves out, or you do you feel like it's it's sort of nice to have the no no band stuff as like a sort of relief from how crazy ever fourth right is? Like, because I, I feel like it's mm -hmm. it's nice to have that. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I need the I I always just kind of thought whatever I write, I'll just give to ever fourth right. 
But mm. what I find is then we end up with a backlog of 45 songs that, you know, mm -hmm. we don't know what to do with. At the end of the day, you're going to hit a bottleneck um, because you need you need input from other from other people. So now I've kind of just mm -hmm. like partitioned my brain. Like, is this going to be never fourth rate song? Let me approach it this way. Is this going to be a Nick Lorraine song? You know, whatever I want to call mm -hmm. it, the Noah band. I might, you know, I, I kind of want to write more strat strat based music, like single coily nice. strat stuff. I, I would like to do like a real straight ahead jazz project. So yeah. So mm -hmm. um uh, here's a qu here's yeah. a question. How, how do you organize your like song ideas either like on your phone or your computer like because half my shit's just like heavy jingle too, <laughs> Isaac <laughs> solo vibe, and it's like I'm, I'm like it's so I have no system in place. Like how do you do it? You mean you've already recorded it and now it's got to sit in some kind of directory yeah. in your computer, like a little a little demo or a little like voice memo or something. Um. So if I'm if I'm tracking like my logic files are called, um, so for my Noah band stuff I have. Roman numeral one, which is the first EP, and then songs mm. one, two, three, four. Roman numeral two is the Clean. new stuff I did. Songs mm. one, two, three, four. And I don't have names for these songs until um, you know, like I only just named the four tracks of the new stuff the other day when the the when the video the video guy said, Hey, I need song names. I was like, All right, here they are. And I kind right, of just right. spent <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so funny how people like because like for our stuff it's so it's so conceptual that we like start with the name most of the time and then work backwards because it's like okay like in the story at this point at this part of the story what's happening with the main character what's the and we like have the name and then the name sort of like embodies like the vibe we're going for yeah um but i feel like some of the more successful like things that i've just written for my own personal stuff it's just it's like isaac techie idea of one and it's because because there's no expectation put on it with a proper name you're just like here's the song idea i want it to speak for itself and then i'll name it like later on that's so that's, that's, people... that's exactly what i do i name everything later on so yeah my songs mm -hmm. are called one two three four five until i'm ready to oh, dude. to name it because also if you name that dude because <laughs> also if you, if you name something three uh the second you give something a working title you call something like like heavy you know song three is heavy it can mm -hmm. never it can never you you you've kind of forced it to uh to be a certain to, thing to, to right? be a thing mm -hmm. so if if i have this idea one day for song three that that involves like somehow getting out of this heavy section and getting into like a different kind of feel um you know now i'm kind of hitting this blockade in my brain like oh wait but i call it heavy should i change the working title should it be called heavy mm -hmm. heavy heavy to to not heavy <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so yeah, you yeah pigeonhole I, yourself a little bit yeah yeah so i i think just uh, for me numbering has always just been the way to go i will i'm gonna take that and uh, <laughs> let's see let's see if that uh if that helps us out in future or it's, yeah i'm gonna give a master class someday like and introducing nick Lorandi. Like, okay guys what you want to do is you don't want to name your songs <laughs> just, <laughs> just call your songs one two three four and You'll be good to go. Thanks. Yeah. No where's, one can uh no one can say it's heavy or not heavy. It's just number three. That's number all three. It's... Okay, where's where's my check? <laughs> just walk off. <laughs> yeah. Um that's awesome, man. I actually like I, and, and let me know if you're if you want to like kind of stay on the social media stuff, but I, I am oh. genuinely curious about like your writing process with this stuff because um it's a thing like we've been we've been focusing on with my band is like um working more on like themes and just tighter songwriting. Cause I think especially for a lot of the prog stuff, like we have a song on the album on the new album that's coming out that's over 10 minutes and uh and i love it it's awesome it's just like every idea and there's there's threads you know, throughout that that kind of keep it together but i guess for you like how do you how do you start writing like a let's say an ever forthright song are you thinking of like a, a, a little nugget of, an, of a riff or a theme or does so, someone else bring something it's hard to say forever forthright because i haven't written an ever forthright song in like two years like oh word like they're all these are all songs that have been like done and then it was finding a vocalist um you know mm. that that cat's out of the bag like you know uh we had to find another vocalist mm -hmm. um then we thought it'd be a good idea to get up to to have jacob redo the bass and so those songs are so are old but i mean i guess it's all it's all the same the, the way i write is the way i write um i so i i usually have a note 
a notepad. I, my phone is being used right now to get this video, but hmm. I have like a on my Apple, like whatever it's called, note note app. Um, I have a a a, um, a note in there called Noah One Inspiration, Noah Two Inspiration, and now I have Noah Three Inspiration. And uh, anytime I'm listening to something, I kind of just like like if I'm in the car and I hear a song that I like, I just jot it down and. Um, it could be the vibe that I like of the song. It could be the chord progression. Mm. Um, and so I, so in my like Noah 2 inspiration note app, there's probably like 30 songs in there that I was, that I just captured and, and, and uh, it's inspired, you know, not all that inspired, not all that I used, but um I just spent spent time with each of those songs and somehow those turned into a piece of music. Um, gotcha. And so you're uh, sort of, you're starting with like a kind of a, a mood or a feeling or an intent and then, and yeah. then building it out from there. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll sit down to say, okay, I am writing today. And that's, that's, that's a consistent, that's always what I do. I sit down and I say like, Okay, I'm going to write for the next uh, two hours. So I got two hours to write. Pull up my note app, and I go through a list of songs that have been, have been like kind of earworms, things I've been really listening to, or not even songs. Sometimes they're exercises or concepts, or you know, I watched like a masterclass on YouTube, and the guy was saying, you know, oh check out this, you know, new like augmented asymmetrical wacky scale, and even that just might be enough for me to pull out my uh, piano, which I guess is step two. Um, mm-hmm. pi- pi- piano is a big part of my writing process so I'm usually tinkering with chords on the piano um, and often my my the very beginnings of my logic files are just all like programmed piano and bass like I'm just kind of like gotcha. recording a piano part putting like a melody on top of it and these are all just like placeholder sounds things I'm not really committed to mm-hmm. and then they just kind of grow from there you just I'm just but I'm super super patient with with my writing process like mm. so i like this chord progression should I change it um what's the melody what should the melody be um mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's important to be methodical i think not not rush through it if it doesn't feel like because then you kind of force things you know yeah yeah i mean so uh my process can also be way simpler than that too i i, I mm. might hear like josh travis come out with some crazy heavy thing and i'll put in my notepad write something heavier than josh travis <laughs> like, <laughs> that is a that is a that's a challenge man that is, yeah but you know you shoot for the stars and you land you know you were you land wherever <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that was a uh, think it was gandhi who said that yeah yeah, yeah. um do you but, find yourself writing writing away from the guitar more so than not or do you like write on the guitar a good amount of the time too um, I usually like refine on the guitar, but I write on the piano. That I think is super interesting because I, the, the players that inspire me the most, like some of these guys, they, I've, I've heard them in interviews say like, they like hate the sound of the guitar. They hate like guitar-y sounds. And that's kind of like where I fall in a lot of ways. Like I, there are certain like intervals and things that I just never really want to use because it doesn't sound modern or cool, or, like whatever I'm trying to go for. And I think a lot of it, it's like almost trying to remove the guitar from the music as much as possible. And then writing on it, writing with MIDI or on a synth or keyboard or whatever, and then bring that back onto the guitar. I think like that's, that's the stuff that inspires me the most. Like, yeah, I, I, it goes, it goes for melodies. It goes both ways. I'll write chord progressions. I almost never write on the guitar. Um, Mm. I find like I I come up with nice, much better voicings and voice leading um, stuff on the piano. And then I figure out how to do it on the guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, melodies can go both ways. Melodies sometimes I start on the guitar because because uh, if I write a melody on the piano and I bring it to the guitar, sometimes the fingering is so messed up that I, I kind of don't want to play it anymore. Like sure. I've, de- I've definitely gotten to that situation where oh, there's like too many back to back fourths here that like sounding. It's good always the fourth man. It's yeah, the- <laughs> yeah, like, just weird stuff like that. Um, so so I've actually been writing. Um, taking progressions I write on the piano and then f- and then figuring out melodies on the guitar. That's something I've been mm. doing uh, more of recently. Um, and then riffs. Riffs also can go both ways. Sometimes I'll come up with like a cool bass line on the piano or 
and, and it'll sound great on the guitar. But um, sometimes if I want a riff, um, I'll actually have the progression in front of me. Like, okay, there's four bars of this, four bars of this, four bars of this, four bars of this. And, mm. and then I'll write a riff with that as my framework. And then the, cool. and then like the output of that may not allude to that progression whatsoever, but the riff sounds good nonetheless. So no one, right. no one would ever think, oh, it's, he's outlining these four chords here. It's so obvious I can hear it. Like sometimes that's not the outcome. Sometimes it's just a sick riff. And, mm -hmm. and then after a couple of months, I even forget where it came from. Like how the hell did I write this? And usually, yeah. That's a cool like, kind of external like tool to have for reference, so to help kind of guide you through that uh, creative process. I've, yeah. I've had a few a few demos where I'll like it'll be like uh, I, I was list listening to a lot of like Revocation one week. And I'm like, oh, Revocation idea three, cool. And then I try to like do my like my rip off Dave Davidson uh, impersonation with those riffs, and it becomes like something totally different. But like I, in my mind, it's always going to be like a Revocation thing, but it doesn't sound that way to anyone else. And, yeah. uh, and that, that's, that's cool. You know? That's that's fine. And the less people know about it, the better. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not wearing your inspirations on your sleeves so much. Yeah, yeah. Or even not knowing your writing process too much. That's another mm. tough, tough part about you know ever fourth rate versus whatever stuff I'm doing solo wise is is they often know what is inspiring a particular track, and so they'll they'll the feedback to something I write is, oh, it sounds too much like this. It sounds too much like that. And I'm like, right. just sh shut up. It's because you know that it's, it, yeah. no Take one would ever. out of the equation. Yeah. hundred percent. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. But the, yeah, the reason the Noah band exists is because it's just uh, a nice outlet for me to write something without feedback from, mm -hmm. from other people. Like, uh, you know, too uh, many cooks in the kitchen, too many cooks. Yeah. But both yeah. are, but both are, both are good. Both, both for are good. Sure. Both projects are great, but um, yeah, for me, if all I'm doing is like, if I, if I, if at the end of at the end of the day, all I want to do is play and write music, then I need to have I need to have both for you know that's for me. One hundred percent, yeah. Those different channels, and I feel like it's um, removing those barriers to like get the desired outcome is really important. Like I, I, I know for me, like even just in my recording space, like I've arranged my room in such a way where I can just have an idea grab a guitar, have a preset and just go and just like record it with as minimal kind of, you know, um, yeah. obstruction as, as possible. And um, it's really important to have those different outlets for in like band context too, because you have like your your super proggy heavy stuff where it's like a real, it takes a lot of time, a lot of people involved. You have your solo stuff where you can just kind of churn out. You have like a, you know, maybe like a lighter jazz thing. Like, in, I think it's all those things kind of relate to each other in one way or, in, or another. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you two quick questions before we go. Yeah. Uh, one, on the inspiration and go piece, the ability to pick up a guitar and track some stuff. Do you have arms on your chair? I do. I do. do. This chair, I don't know what brand of chair this is. It's super sick. I got it at like a used, used furniture store. Um, I thought the arms would be a problem, and they're not. So I um, I back the arms, dude. Hashtag back the arms. You do? Just, okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. How about I, you? No, no, I don't. I feel like the com this particular chair I like for everything but recording in. I, I changed to a drum throne when I'm writing and recording. I switch over to a, a backless, um, armless drum throne, just as little obstruction nice. as, as possible. Uh, with this, I find like, okay, I got to track guitar. I got to like get to the front of my seat and like my nuts are all squished. And then I got to <laughs> sit a certain way. And then I got to sit here. And then, and then, like my right leg is supporting most of my weight, so it's just not good er ergonomically. So I have to, I I get rid of this chair, and so I don't really have an inspiration and go thing. It's more of a, like I find my time to write, and then that's when I do it. Right. What you just said about the everything you have to do to like shift and be comfortable—that's exactly what I do. So maybe I'm just like, just used <laughs> I was to like, it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, doesn't everyone do that? Oh, you're not. Really. <laughs> uh, uh, you gotta get a stool. That's uh, the move. Yeah, drum throne. I think it's the rock, rock and rock em, sock em drum throne. What is it? it's called? Oh what man, the it? <laughs> oh, I think it's a name a, like that. Yeah, rock. Uh, shit, best drum thrones. That's pretty much how I found it. That's the sock em bop em brand. Gotcha. Best drum throne sock em bop em. Like blow it up. Uh, rock em sock em. If you're listening, we got to get some affiliate links rock going. And, <laughs> rock and sock nitro hydraulic drum throne. Rock and sock nitro. I'm gonna copy paste this so I can put it in the uh, in the uh, notes. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty much the only note I took this entire podcast. So 
<laughs> Nick and Isaac talk about one thing. Which um, is the best drum stool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last question is um, reels, Instagram reels versus posts. Are you finding a, a difference in where you post? Like, absolutely. Reels is the move. Yeah. Um, base, so basically every platform, so Instagram, Facebook, um, even like LinkedIn, they're all, YouTube too, they're all trapping right. tick, TikTok. They're competing right? for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so vertical video is the thing. And, um, um, yeah. So reels in, in the past, like probably year or so, um, they've been pushed like crazy on, on, um, Instagram so much so that I think, uh, Instagram just had an, an update where every video just automatically becomes a reel. Um, just again, just to kind of compete with TikTok and those kinds of platforms. But, um, yeah, vertical video like is the future. Um, oh, so I, I, if I post a, if I just make a vertical post, it'll automatically go to a reel. Yeah. Yeah, it should. Um, oh, interesting. and I, I still like this, it's, they're still like, I think in the process of kind of updating it for multiple users. So like, uh, I always just go through the actual reels posting system just to make sure it's, that's what it is in the end. But, um, yeah, vertical, um, 1080 by 1920, um, vertical video. And it's, I don't know if you've experienced this, but like as a guitarist, like guitars suck for like vertical video. Cause it's, it's this like lengthwise instrument. So yeah. it's like, I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. It's all vertical now. I can't do this like landscape stuff anymore. All right. Um, yeah. 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 I find it like, hmm, do people want to see my picking hand or people do want to, do they want to see my fingers? Yeah. And if you have like a square video, it's like, how do I crop that creatively to take up the full vertical space? So like, I know for, for Strandberg, like I'll, I'll take a square video of like one of our artists and it'll be. The center, the center of the of this rectangle is just the original square video, and then the top is the right hand, and then the bottom is their left hand. So it's like you get kind of like three different views. I'm just trying to kind of maxim maximize like the real estate on someone's phone, um, just to get kind of like a full you know full coverage, so to speak. Nice. Um, but advice. yeah, man, re reels is the reels is the jam. It's, uh, Does it make sense to post to write to reels and not do a post? Is that that thing? Uh, yeah, I think I think. Going forward, like I think reels is reels for everything. Just reels. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 afraid to post a TikTok because I hear too much Chinese like conspiracy, like uh <laughs> like listening on my phone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they kind of all have that to a certain extent. I feel you. It's like they're like what the yeah. about everyone oh, everyone, oh. everyone in everyone in uh, TikTok in China is like huddled around like some super secret office, like hey, Nick's got his Nick's got his guitar <laughs> back. Like let's listen. <laughs> what that guy's up yeah I'm, a, I'm a, probably the last person that uh the secret agents in china are listening to <laughs> i guess let's get, the, let's get those jazz licks <laughs> <laughs> learn his secrets i mean the cool part about this whole kind of vertical video movement is that uh almost every platform has that on it now so you can just take one video that you're going to post as a reel to instagram and just repost that on uh, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, like just kind of populate all those different platforms. And, you know, there's, there's nuances to each platform, which are interesting, but, um, yeah. it's, it's kind of this like standardized format now with this whole vertical thing. And, uh, so it makes it easier. Uh, so you yeah. don't have to like, think about like certain kinds of content for different platforms and that's a whole other conversation, but, um, nice. yeah, dude, it's, it's a, it's a weird world, man. I like, I back to the Riffify thing quick. Like I, uh, I just started reposting all of my old Riffifieds as reels. Um, because when, when they were, um, posted originally, they were just like posts and, um, and they're doing so much better, better now than they ever did in the past because reels are just being pushed, um, so much by the algorithm and stuff. So definitely like, even if it's like old, man, old videos of ever fourth right, or just like stuff that you did years ago, just I think reposting it. Yeah. Or just, and just do, you know, you can find a, find a cool reason like, oh, throwback Thursday, flashback Friday. Like here's a little throwback to, to something. And, um, because I felt um, like it Sunday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The classic because I felt like it's Sunday, you know. <laughs> um, but it's true. Like I think uh, they really get a lot of reach. And uh, and again, back to that motivation thing. Like it's cool to just see people who like because like you and I both we're so familiar with our old content, our old videos from years ago that we're we're like, why would I post that? It's ancient history. It's not. I'm not even the same person anymore. But like most people don't. Aren't, like most people aren't familiar with those videos. You know, like, yeah, yeah. like we are. So I think there is a lot of value in in, in resharing that stuff in the kind of current format that is that's being pushed by, by these apps. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so my old stuff from even a year ago before I was doing the Noah band, um, uh, stuff, I think I have like, you know, 400 views on this post, like, Oh shit, I got to pull mm -hmm. this out from the, 
from the graveyard like people can, yeah man people should hear this thing um 100 yeah cool man well it's nice to meet you and and you too dude talk Thanks for to me you. on yeah so we'll um let's make sure we stay friends now that we've uh actually talked dude 100 i have so many more guitar questions to ask you that i'm trying to not uh be annoying about but so sure we'll well, 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 you, can, you can come back I'll, i'm gonna take a note like reschedule with uh isaac and we can have it be more guitar-y sick i would love it dude isaac for guitar chat yeah I've been, I've been, riffs. yeah i've been meaning to do that like we've we've kind of started this podcast just talking about you know whatever just kind of saying hi and introductions mm -hmm. and stuff but um yeah eventually um people are gonna be like dude licks riffs yeah theory <laughs> it's what the people want what the people want yeah. <laughs> play that melodic minor bro yeah <laughs> we came here for one reason melodic <laughs> minor <laughs> um all right man so uh any any anything else you want to plug um my band uh the, i don't think i even said our name this podcast uh we're called the world is quiet here uh progressive metal um new album coming out end of this year maybe early next year but hopefully end of this year if you like BT Bam, if you like uh, the Human Abstract, if you like Ever Forthright, um, check us out. We have a new vocalist named Lou Kelly who is insane. If you like Mr. Bungle, if you like Zappa, uh, you'll dig our stuff. So um, that's in the works. Riffified on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Uh, yeah. That's it. That's what I got. Oh, man. All right, brother. Um, yeah, I'll catch you soon then. Awesome, dude. Talk soon, man. Later. Bye. Yo, good meeting you, man. Bye. Be safe. You too, man.